is me, it's Queen Osset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. All right, guys, so today we're going to do another Q&A. <laughs> I got 11 questions. Um, they're piling up, so I was like, I better start answering these questions. All right, so number one, have you been to Uruguay? Uh, Uruguay is a country in South America. And from where I am in Costa Rica, it's actually not that far. Um, I am planning, it's funny you say that, I am planning a trip there. Because I've read about it online. And some people who've been there said it was really cool. So um, while I'm living in this part of the world, um, I intend to explore all of it. <laughs> I intend to do South America, all of Central America, anywhere that's safe, I intend to go. So um, I'm researching Uruguay. And um, when I'm done, I'll book a trip. So stay tuned because you know I'll be talking about it at some point in time. Two, will you show your condo? Yes, I am. What I have to have is two things. I'm waiting for it to be clean. <laughs> and I really didn't finish decorating, but I'm not going to wait to finish decorating. I'm just going to wait until one day when it's clean. It has to be a day that my assistant comes and cleans because that's the only day <laughs> of the week that it's clean. So the next time that she comes, um, I'm going to do one, um, one of these weeks because I really do want to show you guys the condo I live in because it's really, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's really cool. I like it a lot. I like the way it looks like the aesthetic of it. So I'm going to take you guys around the condo itself and I'll take you outside to the common area, which is really pretty too. So, um, you've seen pieces of it in different videos I've had in the background, but one day I'll give you a full tour on a video. That'd be really cool. So stay tuned. I'll do that very soon. How is the weather and how is the water quality in Costa Rica? Uh, everybody here drinks the water. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we all drink it, so <laughs> we hope it's okay. <laughs> it's no blood. It's no lead in my system, so I don't know. But everybody here does drink the water. Um, the Ticos and the Americans and the, all the expats, all the gringos, we all, you know, we all drink the water. So hopefully it's okay. I haven't gotten sick yet. Four, what movie is similar to your life? Oh my God. I always say, I have been saying this ever since I first saw it and I didn't see it till recently. I have been always saying that Maleficent. I swear Maleficent is my life story. I swear. Anybody who has seen Maleficent um, knows what I'm talking about. I swear that is my life story. I think they ripped me off <laughs> and took my story and made it into a, uh, a, a fiction version. I swear, because that's exactly what happened to me. I'm like, are you serious? You know, but yeah, Maleficent. If you haven't seen Maleficent, it's a really cute movie. Watch it. That is my life. Name five of your favorite songs. All of my songs are old. <laughs> I don't like too many contemporary songs um, that I really like listen to all the time. I listen to I Like It Like That. I think that's probably the only one <laughs> that's on my playlist now that I think about it. I can't think of another contemporary song that's on my playlist. Um, I listen to a lot of old stuff. But five of my favorites, I really love Love Makes Things Happen by Pebbles and Babyface. That was one of, that was my favorite song. It is my, one of my favorite songs. I mean, like, it was the favorite for like 20 years until I heard some other ones that I ended up liking just as much. But that, I used to play that song on repeat. I had a cassette tape and I played that tape till it popped. I love that song. Love Makes Things Happen. Another one is Same Script, Different Cast by um, Whitney Houston and Deborah Cox. Another one of my repeat songs. Uh, Season of the Witch by Donovan. I love that. Real cool, funky beat going on. Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton. I love Clapton. Clapton can play a guitar. He has had some issues in his life and he hasn't always been at his best. But I tell, I mean, you know, his personal best. There was like some um, stuff he, some real bad stuff he did back in the day. People were mad at him making, you know, comments that were considered to be racist. And, um, you know, he's since apologized. This was like in the 70s. But 
I, I really like his music. He has a couple songs I like, and Wonderful Tonight is one of my favorites. And um, You're Beautiful by James Blunt, another one of my repeat songs. So that's five, and I'm going to add a sixth one. Uh, this song is called Don't Know Much by Linda Ronstadt and Aaron Neville. So those are six of my favorite songs. And as you can see, they're all old songs. I love old ballads, especially love ballads. Six, what are three things that people should do to enrich their lives? Travel, meditate, and forgive the past. Travel is going to make you a more open-minded, less prejudiced person. Um, especially if you go to places that are international, you know, see how other people live. For a lot of us, it makes us more humble. It makes us less quick to prejudge. It's easier to understand people and where they come from uh, when you travel the world. So I recommend first to enrich your life to travel. That is the first one. Travel, 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 travel. Travel as frequently as you possibly can. Meditate. Oh, yeah, I said meditate. Meditation to me is one of the best ways to really get yourself into a space um, of groundedness and um, focus. Meditation is great. I mean, if, even if you're not into spirituality, if you're not into like astrology or crystal balls or readings or things like that, meditation, the average, anybody, children can do meditation. Meditation helps with conflict resolution. It helps with your blood pressure. Meditation is something that can enrich your life on many different levels, regardless of your spiritual system, regardless of what you're trying to do. You can be an atheist and meditate. You know, you don't have to be, you know, into new age or this or that. Um, meditation is wonderful to enrich your life. And forgive the past. Most people I know who are really screwed up um, have not forgiven something or someone's from the past. Most people I know that are really depressed, that are really anxious, who have a hard time keeping making relationships, uh, people who um, are addicts of all kinds, sex, drugs, shopping, a lot of them, the problem is they haven't forgiven something or someone's from the past. And this shit is dilapidating to a lot of people. So I strongly recommend that you forgive everything. Um, I'm not saying deal with those people. I'm not saying chill with them anymore. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying release all that bad energy because it really does a number on people. Seven, what are your favorite, what were your favorite shows growing up? Dynasty, General Hospital, The Young and the Restless, BJ McKay and his best friend Bear, Knight Rider, The Smurfs, and Dark Shadows 2. Shout out to Sonny Corinthos from General Hospital because that was that's my boo. Love Sonny. Still love Sonny. I don't even watch the show no more and I still love Sonny. And um, Dark Shadows 2. It was uh, Dark Shadows in the 60s when my mom was young. And then in the 80s, they did another version. 80s or 90s, they did another version of Dark Shadows. That's why I said 2. And I think the lead actor's name might have been Ben Cross. I think that was his name. And I fell in love with this show. Like, I love Dark Shadows. Uh, I was very disappointed in the movie, but the the show, this this two, the first one didn't really move me, but the second one I watched every episode. I loved it. If you ever get a chance to, if you're a vampire fan, watch Dark Shadows, the second series that came on in the 80s or 90s. Uh, this one says, what was the last play you saw? Lion King. I went and saw The Lion King on Broadway. That was really good. That was really a good play. I, I love plays and musicals and things like that. Um, I've never seen any of the Tyler Perry plays in person because somebody just asked me, um, have I ever met Tyler Perry? I've never seen any of the Tyler Perry plays in person, but I've seen many of the movies. I like Tyler. And no, I never met him in person. Not yet anyway. Hopefully, hopefully I will. I, I would love to go to dinner with Tyler Perry and Oprah <laughs> and Iyanla Van Zandt. That, now that would be an amazing dinner. Sitting there with them, powwowing. I would love that. That is a dream. Ten. What other characters influenced you 
besides Erica Kane. My mom named me after Erica Kane, and um, she definitely was an influence. But the uh, two other big influences on me as a young girl was vampires, as I said from Dark Shadows. I really loved vampires. I still love vampires. And it's like, it's not the whole blood sucking thing I kind of ignore. It's really the romance of it. The vampire is such a complex character. And usually when you see the vampire in literature and in cinema, he's a torture. He or she is a tortured character. Like for instance, in Dark Shadows, the, um, the head guy, the, the vampire's name is Barnabas Collins. And he is extremely tortured. Um, he's a vampire, first of all. He hates that fact. His um, his love murdered herself because his side join turned him into a vampire. And, and the, the girl, uh, his, his real love, drove, went crazy. Um, and I always thought it was really cool because that's what he get for having a side join. It's like, it's like you see like the, the karma coming back to the, uh, back to him in this way. His side join was like his girl's handmaiden or something like that. So it was like, dude, you screwed that all up. And um, But they're always so flawed and so dark and so sad, but so powerful, you know, and so rich <laughs> and so eternal and so like erotic at the same time. So the vampire has been a big influence on me, even though you know, I'm not into drinking blood or, you know, that kind of stuff or wearing fake teeth or nothing like that. But I do get a lot from their their stories. I love those. And the other one was Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy was a big influence on me. I love Miss Piggy. Like, I loved her outfits and I love the fact that she was a big woman. I think that's where a lot of my self-esteem came from because I've always been big. I've been big since I was a baby. And seeing Miss Piggy for, like, I started watching her show when I was, like, you know, two or three. So seeing her was like, yeah, big women can be beautiful, you know? And I grew up with that energy and loved to wear, like, some of the Hollywood looks that Miss Piggy would wear, like the long sleeve um, gloves. I had a number of pairs of long sleeve uh, black gloves and gowns and things like that. So Miss Piggy for me was more like a um, a confidence, you know, booster, you know, she taught me like, yeah, you could be big and beautiful. And I'm like, okay. So um, I still love Piggy. Piggy is my girl. And the last one says, what name do you go by? My mother named me Erica after Erica Kane. <laughs> and most people don't call me Erica because I'm not very fond of it. It's not that I don't like the name. It's an attractive name. But um, I don't know. I just don't like going by what I call my slave name, my government. You know, I, I don't really like it that much. It's okay. But uh. so um, a lot of people call me Queen and some people call me Nana. Because when I was in Africa, um, the family that took me in and loved me and adopted me was um, a Ghanaian family there, Asante. And when they take you in, they name you. They usually name you after someone. And they named me Nana Ya Asantewa. Now, the interesting thing about my names, Erica, Nana, both mean queen. Nana Ya Asantewa means queen mother born on Thursday to rule and conquer. Erica means female ruler or conqueror. So in every language, every name that I'm known as, it means queen. <laughs> every one of them. Queen means queen. Nana means queen. And um, Erica means queen. So I guess I was just meant to be a queen <laughs> in some kind of way. So it is what it is. But uh, most people call me uh, queen or they call me Nana. It's very infrequent that somebody calls me Erica. Um, usually people that met me at work, <laughs> you know, or um, here in Costa Rica, they call me Erica because they're, um, it's a name that other Costa Ricans have. So it's easy for them to understand and, you know, pronounce. So. I go by that here. All right, guys, it's time for me to get going. That is my Q&A session. If you have any questions about me, feel free to send them to me. I'll make my next Q&A list and we'll go through the next one. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to somebody else who may be wondering some of the same things.
okay? I will leave underneath here my email in case anybody wants to get a tarot, an oracle card reading, or their chart done, or they want me to consult on a spell or some work they need, anything along those lines, you can email me for an appointment. Likewise, you can email me if you have a question. If you want me to answer a free general question, go ahead and email me. Now, if you're going to email me with a question, I answer the shortest ones first. So try to make it as concise as possible. The long ones I push to the bottom of the list because they take longer to read and they take longer for me to research. So make it as short and sweet as you possibly can if you want me to do it quickly. Okay. All right, guys. So I'll leave my email for that. I'll drop off my social media information. I'll leave my PayPal in case you want to send me a donation. And I'll leave my Amazon wish list in case you want to send me a gift or in case you just want to look at the list and look at some of the cool things I'm going to read next. See you later.